हाय फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल बामोज बायोजीनियस टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट बायोडाइवर्सिटी इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंस फॉर मैन काइंड दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी यूजफुल फॉर यूजी एंड पीजी स्टूडेंट सो लेट अस सी व्हाट इज बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंस फॉर मैन we all know that what is a uh, biodiversity that is a uh, number of different kinds of uh, animals and plants that are present in the ecosystem that is called as a biodiversity now this biodiversity is very important for survival of each and every species or we can say that this biodiversity is very important for survival of the all living organisms on the earth because there is a kind of a interdependency in between the all living things so the biodiversity is a very important now uh, when we talk about the value of uh, biodiversity you will see that there are two values that is uh, direct value of uh, biodiversity and indirect value of uh, biodiversity now see what is a direct value of biodiversity that is a agriculture or it provides a kind of a food security then uh, it is a biodiversity is a direct value another direct value is a human health that it provides uh, different kinds of medicines and again the another direct value is uh, or the biodiversity directly benefits us by for uh, providing a business and industrial opportunity or we can say that it provides an employment generation then uh, there are various types of indirect uh, we can say value uh, for to biodiversity and that value is uh, that is for a larger good or we can say for a public good that is a leisure then uh, cultural aesthetic and ecological services that biodiversity provides to the human beings uh, that is about the value of a biodiversity so when we talk about the direct value of a biodiversity earth has about 3 lakh 90000 plants that are present or uh, that are estimated in 2016 by q um, uh, botanical garden and uh, out of these 3 lakh 90000 plants we depend upon only 30 food plants out of these uh, 3 lakh 90000 plants or these 3 lakh 90000 plants have been classified into 4 and 450 plant families and out of these 450 plant families we depend upon only 55 of plant families for human diet about 7000 species of plants are known to be edible to the uh, humans this is the direct value of uh, biodiversity that means we get uh, benefit from the biodiversity so more will be the number of plants or uh, more will be the number of edible plants in our food basket more will be the uh, we can say the uh, prosperity in uh, case of uh, human beings then the this is the most uh, disturbing uh, thing that we um, encounter today that is out of these uh, the 7 million species only 91000 species of animals and 45500 species of plants have been properly identified and documented but uh, the large chunk of these animals and plants have not been uh classified not been identified and we have not properly explored these plants and we don't know the benefit of these plants and animals 
to the human kind. So this is the most disturbing uh, situation today and um, uh, we can say that before the extinction of these plants we should know the importance of each and every uh, plant and animal that is uh, residing in this earth. This is uh, important because our food basket is uh, very limited and that's why we are facing the hunger problem in each and every nation. So according to the International Food Policy Research Institute, uh, this research institute uh, classified the status of hunger into five categories. Uh, first uh, is a low, then uh, second is a moderate, third category is a serious, and then uh, fourth and fifth categories alarming and extremely alarming. Now, if we consider the India on this um, category, uh, India falls into the category of a serious. That means India is facing a problem of hunger and we can see that in 2020, India's rank in a global hunger index is about 94th out of 107 qualified countries. So this is a very serious situation. Uh, out of 4 lakh species of plants, only 7,000 species are uh, edible. And out of these 7,000 uh, species, only 30 crops form the basis of world's agriculture. So this, uh, these 30 crops, uh, or only these 30 crops, they form the uh, food basket of the world. So according to UN Sustainable Development Goal 2, uh, it advocates for a zero hunger and how this zero hunger should be achieved by increasing the number of crops that we use in our food by identifying different types of crops that are to be uh, used uh, in uh, our food or can be used in, as a food and by that by doing so we can um, overcome the this problem of uh, hunger As I said, the, we have a very limited uh, food basket. See, these are the millets that we normally use in our diet. That is, uh, this one is uh, Rajgira amaranthus and this one is uh, Jowar. Now, we know only these two, but there are different types of millets that are present. These are the five different types of millets that should be uh, included in our diet and they have a very high nutritive value. One is a Barnard millet, then uh, this one is a little millet, this is also known as a Kutki Jori, then a finger millet, uh, this is called as a Ragi, then a Kudu millet and uh, this one is a Foxtail millet or Kanguni Jori. So, all these are the different types of millets that are not used in our food basket. So, there is a, a scope in increasing our food, food basket with these types of uh, uh, millets. Similarly, we can see that this is a uh, same with the brinjal also, we have these different varieties of brinjals, but in our food basket, all these are the wild varieties of a brinjal. But in our food basket, we only use three or four of them. So that uh, needs to be addressed that if we want to overcome the hunger, uh, we should use or we should cultivate all these kinds of uh, brinjals and we should uh, use these brinjals in our food basket. So this is the very uh, simple or we can say a very small example of uh, one uh, crop that is uh, commonly found in our food basket. So.
then another uh, very important aspect of biodiversity is that the plants that are used for a medicinal pur purpose or we can say that for a betterment of a human health these plants are very important out of these uh, 3 lakh 90 thousand 900 species of plants 17,810 species of plants have been identified as a medicinal plants and these medicinal plants we use in a variety of ways see the you know the famous uh, malarial drug that is known as uh, chlorophyll this chlorophyll uh, malarial drug is uh, derived from or we can say that the idea of this uh, chlorophyll drug is uh, came from the bark of this plant that is known as a cinchona tree. See, the this is uh, one of the famous example of how this ethnic medicine is useful for deriving a molecule or a synthetic molecule that can be used against the most dreaded disease like a malaria. Now we know that this is a this was a famous drug, but uh, in recent years it has been found that the malarial uh, pathogen that is uh, Plasmodium falciparum uh, became uh, resistant to uh, this uh, primorphine drugs, uh, and because of that. Uh, it becomes necessary for the doctors to uh, produce or we can say to identify another kind of a drug that is to be used against this resistant uh, strain of uh, plasmodium falciparum. So uh, this woman, Dr. Yu Yu Tu, she used a therapy that is called as a artemisinin combined therapy and that combined therapy is found to be very effective against the, this uh, resistant strain of uh, plasmodium falciparum. So how she achieved this? She used this plant that is known as a Artemisia annua and this plant is used along with the primorphine drugs and that's why it is called as a artemisinin combined therapy uh, this artemisia anua the plant uh, uses or we can say that the this plant extract contains a novel molecule that is known as artemisinin and this artemisinin when combined with the uh, primorphine uh, it is uh, very effective against the new strain of uh, Plasmodium falciparum. So, for this purpose, this lady got the Nobel Prize. So, so it has been found that nowadays this ACT, that means artemisinin based combination therapy, is utilized by many tropical countries and these drugs have been incorporated in their national malaria control program this is the only high volume drug that is synthesized from the plant in other cases what happens that whenever a plant product is utilized for making a drug first of all the that plant extract is uh, analyze for active principle and this active principle or the structure of this active principle is derived and then it is uh, uh, used in a or we can say this particular drug or uh, once the structure is elucidated this structure or the molecule or we can say the chemical that is uh, uh, synthesized in a lab so that becomes a synthesized molecule and this synthesized molecule is used against that particular kind of a disease so but in this case uh, this uh, mostly 
uh, raw material that is plant is used and because of that the market price of this plant fluctuates from 120 dollar a kg to 1200 dollar a kg so you can imagine that uh, this is how a tremendous pressure is created on the ecological resources or on the environment because of uh, such type of uh, plant based drugs nowadays Ranbaxy has synthesized a synthetic drug that is known as arteriolane and this arteriolane is uh, used with a uh, piperactin so this is how that uh, this ACT based therapy is nowadays used against the, the um, resistant malarial parasite that is uh, plasmodium um, falciparum. Now another uh, famous drug uh, that is vinblastin and vincristine that is used against the cancer that, has, that are derived from the plant that is known as a ruzi periwinkle catharanthus ruseus this plant is a native to madagascar and uh, it is very important in stopping the mitosis that is taking place in a cancerous cells so it is very effective against the childhood leukemia and hodgkin's disease see this is a famous example of a drug that is known as a tamiflu which is used against uh, the swine flu this drug is uh, derived from uh, star anise flowers now it has been found that the star anise flowers contain acid that is known as a shikimic acid and this shikimic acid is a uh, intermediate in synthesis of uh, oseltamivir so this flowers are very useful in synthesizing this particular kind of a uh, tamiflu drug now all these are the famous examples that how that these plants or plant derived drugs that are beneficial to the mankind india has about 45000 plant species and out of which 6% of them are used as a medicinal aromatic plants that amounts to be uh, to or uh, that numbers becomes 7333 plants that have been identified as uh, medicinal aromatic plants but out of these only 15 percent of the medicinal plants are cultivated and 85 percent of the plants are collected from the forest so this creates a tremendous pressure on the environment and the forest. It is irony that out of this, in such a situation also, 335 plants are considered as a threatened and only 6 plants are protected uh, under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Now, like that of plants there are certain drugs that are derived from the animals one of them is the uh, eristostatin this eristostatin drug is uh, derived from the venom of uh, asian sand viper it is used against the cancer it binds to the melanoma cells and attracts t cells towards the cancerous cells so that these t cells can uh, kill that cancerous cells. So this is a erythrostatin. Now this is another type of a drug that is derived from the animal that is a tyrofaban. It is an anticoagulant uh, which is derived from saw scale viper venom. It is used against angina and heart attacks. Another drug uh, that is known as a uh, captopril. Uh, this uh, drug is uh, derived from the venom of uh, arrowhead viper. And it is a uh, known blood vessel relaxant, or it is also used to lower the blood pressure. 
whatever the drugs that the people are consuming for lowering their blood pressure that contains this particular type of a molecule which lowers the blood pressure now whenever a uh, arrowhead viper bites to a human being it has been found that this uh, arrowhead viper venom lowers the blood pressure so these scientists they have analyzed the venom of this uh, arrowhead viper and found that a particular kind of a molecule uh, that is responsible for lowering the blood pressure and then they separated that particular molecule and uh, they gave the name as a capital T. Nowadays, the structure, chemical structure of this particular molecule is uh, elucidated and on that basis, this same molecule is synthesized in the lab and it is now marketed as a capital T. So, you can imagine that there are about 75 different types of uh, molecules that are present in the uh, viper venom. Out of that, this one molecule is useful in lowering the blood pressure. So, another 74 molecules are there and that uh, 74 molecules, we don't know uh, the, the property of these 74 molecules and that is to be illustrated. So, uh, this is how that even if these animals are danger, but these animals uh, can give a clue to uh, different types of molecules that can be used for betterment of uh, uh, human life. Now, there are certain drugs that is to be uh, used in the future. These, some of these drugs are uh, the crotoxin, for example, uh, crotoxin that is uh, present in South American rattlesnake. And this uh, crotoxin is an uh, ingredient of the venom of this uh, rattlesnake. And uh, it is responsible for its uh, um, anti cancer activity. So it uh, initiates apoptosis in a cancerous cells and uh, bring down the number of cancerous cells in a human being. Then uh, another kind of uh, molecule that is uh, uh, extracted from the king cobra venom that is known as uh, analgesin. It has been found that this analgesin is uh, 20 to 200 times more potent than the morphine. So, Morphine is a painkiller and that is uh, used uh, in a um, severe uh, operations and to lower the pain. So, this analgesin is uh, 20 to 200 times more potent than the morphine. Then, uh, conotoxins, uh, the, these conotoxins are again these are the painkillers and they are found in a conus magus uh, the um, molluscum and this conus magus contains a small fan and that fan uh, is having the capacity to deliver a toxin into the prey's body and can paralyze that prey so it is it has been found that one th it, it is 1000 times more potent than the morphine and the drug that is uh, derived from these uh, kuna species these are called as uh, ziconotides the um, commercial name of this ziconotide is uh, priyalt then uh, the biodiversity is also a source of uh, inspiration for various types of uh, structures that are uh, very useful in our day-to-day -day life. When a particular kind of uh, structure is mimicked and that is used in our day-to-day -day life, then that particular uh, 
um, we can say the field is called as a biomimetics. So, Velcro tape structure is uh, copied from a Xanthium fruit. So, you must have seen this uh, Xanthium fruit. It is also called as a Gopuru in Marathi. So, uh, this this particular type of a Velcro uh, tape that is used uh, nowadays that is inspired from this type of a structure. Then uh, you must have heard about the waterproof clothing of uh, uh, denim uh, jeans. Uh, this waterproof proofing that is uh, actually um, uh, kind of a inspiration taken from the uh, lotus leaf. See, this is another type of a structure and that is uh, shown by porcupine quills that these uh, tip of these porcupine quills when they enter inside the tissue of uh, animal they are not easy to come out that is because of this peculiar type of uh, structures that are present on this needle like uh, uh, quills that is uh, these are known as a bark so uh, in surgery uh, such kind of needles are very useful so they have developed a barbed needles and these barbed needles are very useful in, uh, during the surgery. So this is again the example of uh, uh, bio-inspired or biomimetics uh, in the uh, animal world. Now another value of uh, biodiversity is in uh, business and industry. It provides uh, the employment, it provides a livelihood. Many industrial materials that are derived directly from the biological sources, for example, building materials, fibers, dyes, rubber, oil, all these are the means of livelihood of, uh, livelihood of uh, millions of people all over the world and this is all possible because of the biodiversity. So uh, biodiversity is also important for security of uh, resources such as uh, water, timber, paper, fiber and food. Then, Indirect value of uh, biodiversity is also very important because it is for a public good, leisure, trekking, bird watching, several cultural activities are uh, dependent upon the biodiversity. Then uh, aesthetic values, uh, it gives an immense uh, kind of uh, calmness and uh, leisure to watch uh, the different types of ecosystems. Even several types of ecological services that are provided by many kinds of uh, insects that are also very important. For example, the regulation of uh, atmosphere, the steady supply of water, then uh, biodiversity is also involved in water purification, recycling of nutrients and providing a fertile soil. Another uh, aspect of uh, ecological services is provided by the biodiversity is uh, pollination, especially insect pollination is very important for our crop plants. So all these kind of ecological services that are provided by different types of animals that are very useful for my, mankind. Biodiversity also attracts many tourists uh, to India. Uh, it has a very large scope in attracting the tourists uh, from all over the world because we have a very rich kind of uh, biodiversity. Share of India in world tourist arrivals is only 1.18 and because of that we have a very large scope in this particular tourism industry. India's rank 
uh, in a world is a 34, uh, 34. And according to World Travel and Tourism Council, tourism industry provides job to uh, one person in uh, 10 people. That means that it has a tremendous scope in increasing the employment. It has been found that 10 lakh in, uh, investment or the uh, 10 lakh rupees investment in an industry uh, provides uh, job to only one person. But if we invest these 10 lakh rupees in a tourism industry or in a wildlife tourism, it provides job to 10 people. So this is the scope of wildlife tourism uh, that is due to biodiversity. So wildlife tourism has averaged 15% growth in India, mirroring many countries. And wildlife tourism is growing uh, at 15% annually in parks. And out of these, 30% of the visitors are foreigners. And these foreigners spend about 600 US dollars uh, for their visit per person. So you can imagine that they bring about a tremendous um, foreign currency to India. Then uh, many tourists, that is about 71% of the tourists, they uh, are willing to revisit the park. So wildlife tourism is a kind of a, um, boon to our tourism industry. So we will conclude this that biodiversity is a crucial for a survival of a man and we must protect it for a betterment of uh, mankind. So thank you for patient hearing. We, I request you to scan this QR code and solve a questionnaire on uh, uh, number one that is only of uh, 10 questions and thank you very much for visiting my channel please subscribe to my channel uh, Bamuj Biogenius for latest uploads and like my videos and comment if you have any query please uh, write in the comment box thank you